What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is an install guide for the new released SteamOS Direct from Valve to be able to install on your ROG Ally devices or Legion Go. So while I'm showing the original ROG Ally, it's the same thing for your Ally X if you're wanting to do that. I'll also have a guide for the Legion Go coming up soon even though it's largely the same and we'll also cover some stuff about being able to change the TDP and things like that in this guide as well. And so some of the first stuff we're going to want to grab is for installing this and making our installation media. Over on the official SteamOS website now for Steam Deck Recovery, you'll see install SteamOS on other devices. Then they have Legion Go and ROG Ally instructions for getting to your secure boot settings in BIOS because we need to be able to disable that to install SteamOS. So we're going to do that and we're also going to be able to make our installation media. You can click install SteamOS on your device at the bottom here and then it's going to take us to some more links. This is going to be done from me doing this on a Windows device, but we're going to click the, to download the recovery image, and we're also going to need the Rufus utility here. So we're going to grab both of these up and get ready. So the first thing I'm going to download is Rufus. One of the top two options here, the .exes will be fine, the standard or portable. I usually just grab the top standard one with the standard install. Click that for download. Now we're going to go over and download the SteamOS Steam Deck image. Click off the uh, check mark there and then download the image here. And that's the only two things we're going to need to create our media besides our USB uh, drive that I'm going to use to create this. So I've got my USB drive plugged in. We're going to go ahead and open up Rufus that we downloaded Get through Windows here. All right. And then you'll see here it's actually picking up my 32 gigabyte um, scan disk drive that I have, my USB flash drive. Now we're going to select the image that we want for that, which is going to be the SteamOS image we just downloaded here. I don't need to unzip it first or anything. I can just double click on that. It's going to load that in and then we don't need to change anything else. We can just click start and it'll begin writing the image for us. It's going to warn you that it is going to delete everything on that drive. Make sure you've selected the proper drive that you want to use your USB flash drive and that you don't have anything on there you want to keep. Now it's going to go ahead and start writing that image. It does take a little bit of time, but once it finishes up here, we can go ahead and close out and eject our device. So we'll go ahead and close this out and open up and I can see it wrote the uh, SteamOS image on the uh, drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and eject and we'll be ready to take this over for our ROG Ally install. All right, and with that ready, the next thing we're going to need to do is get into our secure boot. I'm already powered up, so I'll just do what the instructions say and do restart here. And once that restart disappears, the lights turn off, we're actually going to wind up holding, I'm not doing it yet, but we're going to hold the volume up or the volume plus button to get into our options for boot into our startup for bio. So now that that disappeared, I'm going to hold up on volume here, volume plus, and then it just take a little bit of time and we'll get our options to get into bio set up. So there we go. We're going to do the same thing when it's time to install as well, but we can just go down here and go to enter setup. Press A, and this will bring us into our BIOS. Now we're going to press Y to get into Advanced, and we're going to use our right button up here, and we're going to tab over, because what we want is in the Security tab. At the bottom, we have Secure Boot. We're going to go there. So we'll click on that, and then we'll come down here to our Secure Boot command or control here, and that's going to be changed from Enabled to Disabled. Now we can just tab over one more time and save changes and exit. Now, when the device reboots, you won't be able to log in with fingerprint or anything like that or pin. You'll have to use a password and you may have needed to disable Windows Hello prior to be able to do that. At this point, you're really getting to the point where you're erasing everything on your device anyways and installing SteamOS. So it's just something to keep in mind. So I'm going to take that USB flash drive that we created with Rufus for our installation media of SteamOS. I'm going to plug this into my ROG Ally. I have a full battery, so I'm not worried about power, but make sure you're fully charged or plugged in. And we're going to go ahead and get back into our BIOS. Now, if I just have the device off and hold the volume button up and power on, I can never get into the BIOS with this device for some reason. It works fine on my Ally X. On this one, I actually have to do the restart method, just like I showed earlier, in order to get in and get the BIOS options to come up. But for me, that's just kind of the way it goes. So once we have that come up again here, we'll be able to now select our USB flash drive. So that's going to come up this time and you're going to select partition one. You're going to, you should have two partitions there most likely. You're going to do partition one. Click on that and it's going to start its process of booting into a SteamOS desktop to install SteamOS on the device. Now I'll have a few options here but it's pretty simple across the top. You're going to have one that just says um, wipe device and install SteamOS. You don't need to double tap anything. Everything's a single click here. So we're just going to tap on that 
and start the process. Again, remember it's going to delete everything on this ROG Ally and you'll have to bring it back from the cloud recovery if you want to go back to Windows or whatever the case there. But yeah, you will lose all your data here, so we'll proceed. All right, and it'll get into its process here of installing SteamOS on the ROG Ally or Ally X or whatever you're doing here with your device. Now, if your screen turns off during that, don't panic, it's fine. Just hit the power button one time and it'll bring your screen back on and everything should still be installing. Now, once it finishes, it's gonna to wanna to restart. So all you have to do is click proceed to do the restart at that point. And when it restarts, you'll also be able to just unplug your USB uh, device because you're done with that now, everything's installed on the ROG Ally. So now it's going to go ahead and boot up for its first time. And once it does that, it'll look very familiar here to Steam Deck users or anyone who has set up a new Steam Deck. And controls won't work off the bat here when you first start up. Wait till you get into SteamOS and they'll be working just fine. I haven't had any problems with it. But for initial setup, just use your touchscreen to set your time zone, connect to the internet and all that and do this initial install that we have to do with SteamOS right here. It goes pretty quick and then you can sign in and then it'll restart and boot you into SteamOS finally actually here for the first time on your ROG Ally. Now all the controls are working, even gyro works, all that kind of stuff. And again, I've tried a few games so far and I haven't had any problems, not to say that there aren't any. This is still pretty early days for SteamOS from Valve on these devices and it does need more work. It does miss um, some uh, features as well like TDP options and uh, GPU options and things like that that we'll get into as well but quick access steam button here all that working fine and we have all the normal stuff if you if you've used a steam deck this will all look really familiar I also went into settings and system and made sure I updated things right away because I did need to update to the new 3.7.8 because it wasn't on that just yet so we got that done and had everything updated installed a few games and we're ready to go Opposed to Windows, SteamOS is quite quick to set up and it usually doesn't take very long. And it kept my 5 gigabyte VRAM settings that I had set in Windows in the BIOS as well, which you can still change in the BIOS if you want to mess with the VRAM settings as well. But yeah, should look really familiar to anyone who's used the Steam Deck or SteamOS here and everything working fine. Now again, we don't have the, uh, we do have the 120 FPS VRR and all that here that we can turn on. Uh, we don't have actual manual GPU clock stuff that we can mess with and TDP settings we don't have. It's basically maxing out at 15 watts, which is pretty rough as far as like a lot of games that want more power on the Z1 Extreme. 17 to 22 watts tends to be better, but that's kind of where it caps out until Valve brings actual TDP support where we can change it within SteamOS. But there is a plugin if you want to get into a little bit more work uh, that we can use using Decky Loader and a manual installed plugin with that called Simple TDP that will allow us to do some more work here that we'll get into in just a minute if you want to add that. But if you don't, you'll be running at 15 watts max most of the time as far as I can tell. And ultimately though, <laughs> for Doom that's hard to run, it was actually doing pretty decent and easier to run games will be fine. But most of you know that have used a Z1 Extreme, when you get to 15 watts and under, a lot of games, especially that are demanding, aren't gonna run as well, especially since we do have options to run higher resolutions on some of these games. You can see here though, we are able to run 25 watts by making some, uh, adding on those plugins and messing with that a little bit. So that's what we'll get into next here. If you wanna be able to manually change that TDP and get a little bit deeper into the settings for the device instead of just being locked into what uh, Valve has available right now. So that's what we'll get into now if you wanna check that out. All right, so for this same thing, we're gonna to wanna to go to our desktop mode. So we're gonna go in here to power and we're gonna to go to switch to desktop and get over to our desktop mode. Now next you're gonna to wanna to use whatever browser you like to use here and you're gonna get over to the Decky Loader website and I'll put a link in the description for that as well, decky.xyz and we're gonna have it download here and it's pretty quick. We'll close the browser, we'll open up our downloads folder and we'll just single tap on our downloaded Decky Loader install. We'll click execute and we'll do continue. All right, it's gonna automatically make and erase a password here to go ahead and do the install, which is fine with me. Later on in the video though, we are gonna to have to set up a password. We're gonna do the stable release here and it'll go through its install process. Again, very quick here for Decky Loader. Once that's finished up, we can click OK, close everything out. And then even though we need to be on desktop mode for the next part for the actual plugin, I always like to go check uh, in game mode and make sure that the Decky Loader install worked and it's showing up. So we're going to go back to game mode real quick, quick access menu. And at the bottom, you can see indeed 
we do now have Decky Loader installed. Now we have to manually install the plugin, so we'll go do that in just a minute. But uh, if you want to use the store, which has a lot of great plugins that we use on Steam Deck all the time, you can go into the store here and there's a lot of great other plugins you can check out and get into and use for your device as well that just make things a little bit nicer. But what we'll concentrate on here is the TDP uh, plugin I want to use, which is a manual install. So back to our desktop mode, back to our browser, and we're going to go get simple Decky TDP. I'll put a link to this in the description as well. But if we just scroll down here, we'll get to the install options. And down here, all we're going to have to do is copy this install script right here at the top, the quick install slash update version. I can just tap there and it copies. We're going to go into our system and console. And while we're in there, we're just going to paste the, um, the link that we just copied. So go in here and click and we'll paste. Click on there. All right, now I'll hit A and that'll go ahead and start the install process. Now, again, for this one, we actually do need a Steam Deck password set. All right, so what we want to do to set this up is um, we're just going to go into our, let's go back here, into our regular settings tab here. We're going to scroll down to the very bottom where it says users. And then we're going to click change password. And you can set this up to whatever you want. I always wind up wiping mine out anyway, and I just use Steam in every video. It's just easy and it's not something I use for anything. So tap on that. You're not going to see anything type, but just type the password you made and then that'll get you through the rest of the manual install here for that plugin. It's very quick and easy. Once that's done, we can just close everything out and once again, go ahead and get back over to game mode. All right, once we get booted back into game mode, quick access menu, back down to our Decky loader and you can see now we have simple Decky TDP. This will give us a lot more options to adjust TDP among other things if you want to get a little bit deeper into it here. We've got GPU modes that you can mess with here. You can completely turn off messing with anything that has to do with the GPU and leave that up to Steam OS. We can get into maximizing our TDP range a bit. Again, it maxes at 15 right now, but we can change that max down here. I'm going to max mine at 25 because that's the max handheld that we got from Asus originally, um, just in general here for running that. And I don't need to boost a lot more, but we'll set it at that. And then at minimum, you can go all the way down to four. And then if you go down through, there's just a lot more options as far as enabling GPU controls and other things that you can get into here, automatic CPU settings and things like that. So if you want to get deeper into it, you certainly can. I'm more interested here just getting into the ability to change TDP and not just be stuck at maxing at 15 here on the Z1 Extreme. So now you can see here at the top, TDP watts, I can max that out to 25 now. So it'll level out to 25 when I'm gaming. So we'll jump into Doom here. I already showed this a little bit earlier in the video, but yeah, we're able to go ahead and run here at 25 watts now instead of at the 15. Some games will really benefit from that as to where some just won't necessarily see a big change. You guys know how it can be with the TDP here in the Z1 Extreme and how it'll run. But 17 to 22 watts is usually my sweet spot for a lot of games on here. So that's just another option if you want to get into the TDP and all that kind of stuff while we're waiting for Valve to push that out officially so we can change and tweak all that inside of SteamOS uh, without any plugins. Anyways, guys, hopefully this guide was helpful for getting SteamOS on your ROG Ally or Ally X or maybe one of your other devices and even adding in this plugin for TDP options, among other things. All right, guys, as always, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.